Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 28 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about the cast and convert functions, when to choose one over the other. Now, in SQL Server, to convert one data type to another, we have two ways cast and convert functions can be used. Now before looking at the syntax of the cast and convert functions, let's look at an example. Now, If you look at this table, I have got three columns, ID, name and date of birth. Now what I want to do is in the output, you know, I want the output like this, the second table we have here, ID, name, date of birth as it is and a converted date of birth. Now in the output, I want a three letter month name and an AM, PM for the time. Instead of displaying it like this, I want you know the date to be displayed as shown in the converted date of birth column. Okay, so obviously in order to achieve that, we have to convert date time date of birth column into NVAR care column. And to do that, we can use, so we are basically converting one data type to another. So to do that, we have cast and convert functions. Now, if you look at these two queries here, the first and second queries, these two queries give the same output that you see on this second table here. Okay, so what are we doing? In the output, we want ID name, date of birth, and converted DB, uh, date of birth. So four columns, so ID name and date of birth as usual. And I want the converted date of birth column. So in order to convert the date of birth, I'm using the cast function. Okay, so cast, and I'm saying ca cast this date of birth to NVAR care. Okay, so if you look at the syntax, uh, cast, expression or column name as your target data type. Our target data type here is NVAR care. And if you look at there, we have another piece to it. We have this length within square brackets, which means whatever is specified in square brackets is optional. That's how we read MSDN documentation. If they have specified anything within the brackets, then that means that part is optional. So we haven't specified the length here. If you want to, you can specify the length. Let's look at that quick example of how to specify the length. So if you look at this particular example, select star from TBL employees, I get ID name, date of birth. Now what we want is we want to convert the date of birth into NVAR care column. And to do that, we are using the cast function, passing in date of birth column and asking it to convert to NVAR care. Okay. And we are giving it an alias name as convert as converted date of birth. So when I execute that, we should get the converted date of birth. Okay. Now here, for the target data type, we are not specifying the length. If you wish, you can specify the length. For example, let us say, if I say the length as 5, convert the date time date of birth to NVAR care of length 5. So obviously, when we execute this query, as you might expect, you know, the output will be knocked off to 5 characters. Okay, so you may want to be careful when you specify that length. On the other hand, when I specify 10, you know, still something is knocked off. So maybe when I specify 11, we get everything back. But we don't get the time. So if you want time, maybe you will have to slightly increase that to maybe 20. Yep, we get the time as well. Okay, now, so that's the syntax for cast function. Cast your source column as target data type and length of the target data type is optional. Okay, and the same is the case as convert function. If you look at the convert function, you specify the target data type first. We want to convert to NVAR care, comma, and your source column, which is nothing but our date of birth column. And if you look at the syntax from MSDN here, it says this is the target data type, and obviously length is optional again because that's present in the square brackets, and your source column or expression, and if you look at this here, we have another third parameter for convert function. In this query, we haven't used that, but there is another third optional parameter, which is the style parameter. We'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, but understand that there is this third parameter called style for convert, but cast doesn't have that. Okay, so obviously both of these queries give us the same output as you see here on this table. Okay, cool. So let's execute those two queries and make sure we get the same output. Okay, so we get the same output. Now, let's look at this example. Let's see how to use the style parameter. Um, okay, so what I want to do is, in this, in the first example that we have seen, we are converting the date of birth 
to NVAR care, but we don't really have the control on how we want this, you know, date time to be formatted. Okay, but if you want to control how that date time should be formatted, then MSDN, I mean Microsoft has provided us with a lot of styles. Okay, so for example, I want you to write a query now which gives me the date of birth like this. I just, first thing is, I just want only the date and that too, the date should be in DDMMYYY format. Okay, so to do that, we are using the convert function. You cannot do that using cast function. You will have to use convert function. So I'm using the convert function. and I'm saying, okay, convert date of birth to NVAR care. And then I am using the third optional style parameter as well. So for style parameter, this is the third parameter. So for the third parameter, I'm using 103. So what does 103 mean? Check this table. 103 means DDMMYYY. Okay, now do I need to remember all these integer numbers? Now, not only these, there are several of them. Okay, I just picked a few from the MSDN documentation. There are literally, you know, 20 to 30 styles there on the MSDN website. Okay, so we don't have to really remember them. If you just search Google, you know, date time styles in SQL Server, you will get that as the first article. Okay, so we are basically saying convert this to DDMMYYY and we have the output. Okay, so if you want to control how the output date and time to be formatted, you can use styles. Okay, now not only date and time, even if you want to format decimals the way you want it, you can use styles. Okay, so all the styles for all the related data types are present on MSDN at this URL if you wish to check them. So, so far what we have seen, uh, we have understood that there are two ways to convert from one data type to another, cast and convert. What is the difference between them? Convert has an optional style parameter, whereas cast doesn't have it. Okay, we'll look at more differences between cast and convert in a bit. Okay, also we have seen how to read the MSDN documentation. So, according to the MSDN documentation, if something is in, within the square brackets, then that piece is optional. You may or may not provide that just like length and style parameters. All right, now let's look at how to get just the date part. In the previous example, we have seen how to get just the date part. You know, we are converting the date of birth to NVAR care and we are using 103 style. Not only 103, you can also use 101 or 102 depending on which style you want. All of them will give you just the date. So that's one way, convert it to NVAR care and specify the style you want. Okay, so that's one way and that's exactly here. That's one way to get just the date part of a complete date time. Okay, but in SQL Server 2008, we have this date data type introduced. In SQL Server 2005, we only have date time. Okay, but in SQL Server 2008, they have uh, date time, date, as well as time, three different parameters, uh, um, data types, sorry. Um, so since we have a whole, you know, just the date data type, what you can do is instead of converting a date time data type to NVAR care, you can say, okay, I will convert it to just date, which will give you the date part, just the date part. Okay, and you can do that either using cast or convert function. Okay, but to control the formatting of the date part, you still have to use, you know, you still have to convert the date time to NVAR care using the styles provided. When converting to date data type, the convert function will ignore the style parameter. Okay, the convert function will respect the style parameter only if you're converting it to var care or NVAR care, you know, basically the, to the string data type. All right, so that's about how we want to convert, you know, date time just to date. Okay, another simple example that I want to show you is, um, look at this, I have the ID of the person and the name of the person. Um, I want the name dash ID. Okay, so name dash ID, both in the same column. So how do I do that? Obviously, since ID is integer, and if you want to concatenate that integer with the name of the person, obviously you will have to convert that ID to NVAR care, and that's exactly what we are doing here. Select ID name, both the columns as usual, and then I'm saying select name to the name concatenate hyphen, I mean the dash, 
and to that concatenate ID after converting it to var var Let's quickly do that. Okay, so what we want, we want select ID, comma name, um, and I want ID, sorry, name to the name we want to concatenate dash and to that we want to concatenate the ID from TBL employees table. Let's execute this and see what happens. Obviously we get an error. Conversion failed when converting the NVAR care value to data type integer and that makes sense. You're trying to concatenate this integer to this name you know, which is NVAR care, it's not possible. And you are u doing that using the plus sign, okay? So that's why you have to convert this to VAR care. You can either use cast or convert. I'm using cast here, cast ID as NVAR care. And then when we execute this, obviously we'll get the output as expected. And if we want to give a column name to that, we use the alias as maybe name dash ID. So when we execute that, we should get the output that we are expecting. Okay. So we'll look at another, you know, real practical example. And to understand this better, I have this table called TBL registrations. So let's look at that. Select star from TBL registrations table. So if you check this table, Okay, let's go back to the slides. If you check this table, there are users who are registered and there is this registered date. So if you look at this, one, two, you know, there are two people who are, have registered on 25th and there are one, two, three people who are registered on 24th and there's one person who is registered on 26th. Now what I want you to do is, I want you to write a query which will give me the total registrations by the date. I don't really care at what time they have registered, but I want the total count of registrations by the date. Okay, so if you look at this, I can clearly say 24th, you know, most registrations happened on 24th, 3, that's the highest, and least number of registrations on 26th, okay? So obviously, if we have to do this, we use group by class. Again, if you're new to group by, um, please check the earlier, um, you know, parts in this video series. So now let us see how to write this query. And obviously, if you look at this here, it's pretty simple. In the output, what you want, you want the registration date and total registrations. So we will select the registration date, Okay, let's first write this query. Okay, so in the output, we want the registration date. So what we need to do is we need to select the registration date. So registration date. And what else we want? We want count of ID as let's say total from which table? We want that from the registrations table. So TBL registrations, and we want to group by registration date because we want to count the total number of registrations by date. So we are grouping by registration date. So when I execute this, look at what's going to happen. Uh, invalid column name registration date, let's see. So what has gone wrong there? Registered date, not registration. Registered date. Huh. Okay, so let's execute that. Now, if you look at the output, this is um, this is not what we expected. Now, why did we get this output? Because you are saying group by registered date, but within the date, we have got date and time as well. At the same date and time, nobody has registered. That's why it's not grouping anybody. It's in fact grouping, but there is but, but there is no one who is registered on the same date and same time. 
okay so if you want to group just by the date then you will have to convert this to date data type so let's convert this to date data type and to do that we can use cast register date as we can use the date data type so we need to do the same thing even in the select list because we don't want the time we just want the date and we want to group by that date okay so when we execute that you should get the output as expected and obviously we will not have the column name if you want the column name just give the alias registration date so obviously when we execute this we should get the output as expected okay so this query when you have casted the date to I mean the date time data type to date you are able to group them correctly as you expect by day otherwise we got the output as shown here which is incorrect which is not what we want and finally we'll talk about the differences between cast and convert okay so you know if we want to convert from one data type to another data type we have two ways why do we have two ways in the first place why do we have these two different functions now cast is actually an ANSI standard okay it's based on standards so obviously if it's based on standards then that function can be used on different database applications okay so if portability is a concern and if you want to use the script that you have written with other database applications use cast because it's based on ANSI standard whereas convert is specific to SQL Server okay but the advantage of using convert is that it provides more flexibility than cast and we have seen examples where uh, we have actually controlled how we want date time data types to be converted using styles with the convert function okay with the cast function we cannot use style parameter okay now when do you when should you use one over the other now the general rule is since cast is based on ANSI standard use cast okay unless you want to take the advantage of the style functionality in convert function okay on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET and C Sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day